This conference will now be recorded. Uh, good morning, everyone. Let us start with the session. Uh, so today uh, we will be starting off with the uh, AMBA Chai protocol uh, training. So as part of this, we'll be focusing on the latest version of the Chai protocol, that is uh, uh, version E. There are uh, versions from A to E. So we'll be focusing on the latest version of the Chai protocol. Uh, first, let's discuss about the schedule for the training. Uh, the training will be for six weeks. It'll be, it'll be only weekends only training. We'll have training on Saturday and Sunday, around three and a half hours on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, and it is available in both online and offline. If those anyone interested in attending classroom, they can come down to institute and attend offline also. And uh, we will be providing assignments for every week, whatever topics we cover. For those topics, we'll be providing you the assignments so that it will give you a chance to look through the spec and the presentation and uh, question the things and understand the things better. And uh, we'll also share the session notes and uh, we'll also give you access to the presentation. Uh, now, the agenda will be, uh, it will be an in-depth training because we are spending almost uh, six weeks, uh, close to 35 to 40 hours of training. Each and every topic in the chai will be covered. Uh, so initially, we'll be starting off with understanding the chai overview. Uh, then we'll understand what exactly is the cash coherency. Then we'll understand uh, the cash line state diagram. I mean, uh, how the cash line states change based on various uh, chai transactions. Uh, then we'll also talk about the coherency protocol. Uh, then we'll talk about the chai architecture and the topology and the different components that make up the chai topology uh, then we'll talk about component naming so you'll come across things like request node home node slave node there are different naming conventions are there what exactly is these things we'll talk about all those aspects uh, then we'll talk about transaction classification i mean there are different types of transactions are there a read transaction a write transaction data less transaction uh, right so like that there are multiple types of snoop transactions so we'll be discussing about all those types of transactions. We'll also talk about uh, channel overview. Basically, uh, AMBA Chai protocol consists of uh, around four channels. So for doing different aspects like request, response for each thing, there is a dedicated channel. So we'll be discussing about those channel concepts and what constitutes those channels. Uh, then we'll talk about the channel fields, the transaction structure. How does one transaction look like in uh, uh, AMBA Chai? Uh, then we'll be talking about address signals, control and data signals, uh, network. And then you see going forward, we'll see that uh, AMBA pro Chai protocol has been implemented in three layers, network layer, protocol layer and the link layer. So we'll be talking about network layer, the protocol layer, uh, uh, link layer. And we'll be then talking about advanced aspects like exclusive access, uh, cache stashing and uh, the DBM operations, distributed virtual memory operations. Uh, we'll be talking about how the error handling works in uh, Chai protocol. Uh, and also we'll be discussing about the quality of service so this is what is the agenda even though it list looks smaller but each topic in itself is a major topic i mean each in itself requires two to three hours to discuss in depth so that is where the training would require around six hours uh, six weeks to go in depth of the chai protocol so first let's start with the chai protocol overview how it has evolved and uh, what is that? Uh, what are the features that constitutes the Chai protocol? Let's discuss that. Uh, Chai stands for coherent hub interface. Uh, what is coherence? Coherent we'll discuss. Basically, it's a concept where uh, you see you can understand the whole uh, system SOC as a uh, masters, slaves. Slaves are nothing but the different types of memories, right? Memory mappings. Uh, when we say coherency. Every master in the system, every master in the system should have the same view of the some location. Let's say it's like if I take this diagram, uh, let's say there is a location 100 in this slave, AXS slave. So when we say that it's a fully coherent system, this master also should have the same data for 100. Let's say if it is accessing, it should get, let's say, 25 data. If this master is also accessing, it should get 25. If this master also accessing, it should get 25. This would be called as coherent. I mean, you may say, what is there in that? I mean, every, every component will get the same data, right? 
when cash comes into picture that actually that reads and writes don't happen directly to the main memory always the access happens to the caches locally caches will be there to so that access will happen the cache coherency the coherency is a concept where there will be some kind of interconnect in case of as as protocol which will make sure that all the look all the caches gets up to date as and when some other master access that cache uh, my different cache also gets updated that is what we call as a coherent system so we'll talk more about what is coherent system and what exactly is the cache coherency in the following slides uh, during this uh, discussion if you have any doubts please feel free to uh, ask your doubts <coughs> next uh, see chai is an evaluation of uh, sorry evolution of the ace protocol you see ace is nothing but uh, axi plus cache coherency plus dvm operations plus barrier transaction we we'll call like that i can say chai has is i mean a completely the uh, overall top overall changed model of uh, uh, ace protocol i mean the concepts remain same the fundamental concepts remain same okay uh, plus it supports uh, uh, memory ordering transactions uh, and the features to support the feature support for arm v8.1 v8.2 and the latest and the other latest arm architecture features basically what is the changed model of ace means to to support larger scale uh, i mean to to support uh, scalability and performance I mean, to to be able to add more number of masters to get more bandwidth out of the system so that is where we go for chai protocol in essentially both ace and chai does the similar work cash coherency dvm operations barrier transaction when you come to chai protocol it is the the topology itself has been changed see ace is always uh, interconnect based model is this is how ace interconnect ace based system look like multiple masters connected to the interconnect and on the other side you have ax port through which you connect the axi system ax interconnect you will when we go to chai protocol we will see that this is not the kind of topology chai suggests uh, there are of course there is something called as cross bar interconnect that is one thing there are different topologies so the user can choose the topology based on the requirements let's say if i need performance as a requirement i can go for one type of topology so that is where chai becomes very flexible protocol where user can choose the type of topology they need based on the specific requirements so we'll talk about all those things in the later sessions so i hope you have understood that chai is no it's not come it's similar to ace with the changed model how the things have been implemented how the access happens the basic unit of communication those things have been changed but the fundamental concepts like cache coherency dvm operations barrier transactions memory ordering transactions uh, okay except for this they are, they remain same from the ace protocol so that means if you are familiar with ace protocol or any other cache coherency protocol for you learning chai protocol will be relatively easier now let's go a little deep into this a uh, chai protocol there are five issues issues means five versions are there it's not the issue i'm talking about uh, how many versions have been released they are a to e chai version a chai version e like that okay. chai a protocol is basically the first version of the chai protocol basically that is where they have defined the new channels uh, the chai term terminology the component naming everything has been uh, implemented in chai a protocol this is the first version of the chai protocol that has been released so that is where they define new channels terminology everything they also provide the examples of how the request should be done how the snoop filter should be implemented uh, how the cache Uh, state transa transitions happen all those things are defined in chai a protocol also it defines the rules for transaction ordering exclusive access and distributed virtual memory operations 
talking about chai b version it adds on top of a on top of a it adds features for supporting arm v8.1 arm v8.2 extension system extensions so i'm not right now talking about the c d e because unless we understand the fundamentals you probably won't be able to understand what exactly we mean by distributed virtual memory what are this uh, arm v8.2 system extensions and all those things first let's go through the fundamentals then you will be able to understand these things better so around that time i'll introduce you to the all the versions of the chai protocol next uh, first let's talk about aas protocol versus chai protocol how do they differ let's focus on that. Uh, first AS stands for axi coherency extensions uh, uh, in uh, okay whereas chai protocol uh, here chai is there which will come later uh, it provides hub level coherence next AS has five line states in AS, if you know AS protocol you would know that uh, it has got uh, the cache line every cache line is assumed to be in one of the five states either a cache line can be in unique dirty state a cache line can be in shared dirty state or it can be in unique clean state shared clean state or invalid state whereas chai protocol uh, five cache line states are there that is it can be unique dirty shared dirty a uh, unique dirty partial a uh, unique clean shared clean unique clean empty and invalid so you see there are cache line states seven cache line states are possible in chai protocol okay. uh, then uh, as protocol extends the axi write and read channels see as i told you in the previous slide as is nothing but axi plus the things added to support cache coherency dbm and barrier transactions so it extends axi read and write channels by introducing separate snoop address snoop data and snoop response channels it, it is ACE is a point to point topology. Uh, ACE supports up to 32 masters in a coherent domain. You can have up to 32 masters. For example, in this case, you have got three masters. In case of ACE, you can have a, if there is a provision of up to adding 32 masters. Uh, whereas in Chai protocol, it classifies different components in a system by node type. Each component is treated as a node, and each node has a one ID, unique node number okay and provides a means for communication between the nodes it supports up to 64 masters uh, ace is suitable for smaller and simpler systems okay. the way protocol is implemented uh, the way interconnect is implemented it only supports smaller and simpler systems uh, talking about chai protocol it supports other than whatever ace supports it also supports atomic operations memory ordering hints the quality of service so there are multiple things that chai supports on top of ace it is also it is suitable for larger and more complex systems when we say more complex system system having large number of masters uh, the slaves that is the memories peripherals and memory controllers all those things is what is what what we mean by more complex systems so this is a brief about difference between ACE and CHAI protocol. Now let us uh, now sir, talk. Yeah. Uh, sir, can you uh, can you explain what is a cache line? I will be talking about that. That is what I am talking in this slides now. Okay, sir. Okay. So now let us talk about uh, cache coherency. Uh, so so as part of this, we'll be talking about what is a cache. That is cache line. What exactly is cache coherency means? Uh, what is a cache state diagram and the cache line concept of snoop and concept of invalidate so we'll be talking about all these things now uh, first what is a cache a cache is basically uh, it's a memory which is sitting between uh, cpu and the primary memory system memory okay the primary memory can also be called as system memory okay uh, which provides CPU with the quick access to the memory contents. So you can see, as you can see, uh, this is more close to the CPU. So if it accesses something from here, access will be quick. If it accesses from here, access will be slower. 
because it is connected through some interconnect or whatever right the latency is larger okay so these things are called as uh, caches i'm sure all of you would be familiar with the what is basic definition of cache so let's read through that once so what is a cache it is a extremely fast memory uh, which is kind of implemented using sram uh, cells uh, it's extremely fast memory that acts as a buffer between the dram and the cpu so primary memory is the ddr memory this is the cpu uh, this is a fast memory which provides cpu with the fast access to the frequently accessed uh, locations a cache memory holds frequently requested data and instructions so that they can they are immediately available to the cpu when needed uh, I hope you understood what is cache. Uh, next, let's talk about uh, what is cache coherency. I will also introduce the term cache line in the following slides. Uh, cache coherency ensures that uh, all processors and or bus masters, it can be processor or a bus master within the system have same view of a shared memory. When we say same view, uh, what we mean by same view is if one of the master is accessing address location 100. If it, it, let's say it's getting 25 data. As I said, other master, if it accesses 100, it should also get 25. It should not get a different data. So that is what we mean by a, a same view of the shared memory. Let's say one master has a private memory, which no one can, no one else can access. Then it need not be coherent. Okay. Whereas when we say shared memory, it must be coherent. I mean, concept where if any processor accesses a specific location, they all should get the same data from that location. Okay. Uh, cache coherency ensures that changes to data held in cache of one core. See, every core will have its own L1 cache, right? Uh, whatever changes that you do into that uh, cache should, are visible to other cores. Other cores are other cores also should see the changes to that cache line making it impossible for course to see stale or old copies of the data they it's it should not so happen that if i am accessing something i should get i get old data this is getting latest data then it is wrong then it is not coherent okay so in this case we are just explaining how does a coherent uh, uh, system look like you see we have got uh, two processor subsystem we have got one cluster another cluster okay uh, in one cluster, there is a two cores are there. Each core has its own associated L1 cache and uh, two cores have associated L2 cache. Okay. And my other cluster also has the same architecture. So the coherency concept applies to these cores also, these cores also, clusters also basically. Okay. So the coherency between them is maintained through cache coherent interconnect. There's a cache coherent interconnect which maintains the coherency for these clusters and core level. Uh, what is meant by system level coherency? Let's understand. A system is coherent when all master are able to read the correct data from any valid address at any time. When to say what is the definition of coherent is, uh, it is said coherent when all masters are able to read correct data from any valid address at any time. Uh, it removes the need for software cache maintenance. Uh, how it works? Uh, you see there is a cache state diagram is there uh, that ensures that when old copy of the cache line is written, other copies are invalidated. See, there is a state diagram which will tell the guidelines what happens when I read a location, when I write to a location uh, and uh, so how it should be dealt. That is what the these ACE and CHI protocols implement. Uh, multiple copies of the cache lines can exist when other masters read the shared data. See, it is possible that uh, multiple masters can have the same cache line data, but they all should be coherent. Uh, I hope you got a basic idea about what is system level coherence. Next, cache coherency types. Uh, there are two types of cache coherency. One is called a software managed coherency. One is the hardware managed coherency. Uh, generally, whatever we have been talking more about, more from a perspective of hardware managed coherency, uh, when you go to software managed coherency, it becomes complex and it impacts the system performance because uh, it becomes the responsibility of the software to maintain the coherency. It essentially impacts the performance. 
so that is where uh, most of the implementations prefer hardware managed coherency in the hardware itself you take care of coherency maintenance first in software managed coherency software is responsible for maintaining coherency when i say software we are talking about device drivers uh, it clears the dirty data uh, old data from caches it see in the software managed coherency uh, whatever dirty data is there it is invalidated uh, from the caches it takes time adds to software complexity i mean because software is taking care of the coherency it adds the latency and can reduce the performance when there are high rates of sharing see when the lot of things are being shared my software software means the instructions that are executed by the processor are supposed to take care of the coherency so that start, that impacts the overall system performance next talking about hardware managed coherency hardware maintains coherency between data caches within a cluster a core automatically participate in the coherency scheme when it is powered up and has its d cache and mmu enabled and an address is marked as a coherent see in case of hardware managed coherency there is no role of the software the core itself automatically participates in the coherency scheme uh, whenever you power it up and has its d cache means data cache and mmu enabled an address is marked as coherent so only for the address locations which are marked as coherent coherency is maintained for the locations which are not need not be cache coherent uh, there let's say some location is not part of the main memory so you don't need to maintain any cache coherency for that uh, this hardware coherency uh, managed coherency this adds to some hardware complexity see here software is getting complex in hardware managed coherency hardware is getting complex uh, and uh, that that complexity will increase the complexity of the interconnect uh, and to clusters also because at the cluster level also they are able to they are supposed to maintain the coherency right but greatly it simplifies the software develop enables applications that would otherwise not be possible using only software coherency so that is where you see it has got more advantages compared to software level coherency for any cluster level coherency they take care of they implement using hardware managed coherency next let us talk about some of the coherency keywords like someone was asking what is a cache line so let's discuss all those keywords now first let's start with understanding the cache line uh, to understand the cache line the best way is let's take this diagram or whatever diagram i've shown you here to this let's understand let it be let this slide be there okay uh, in this case uh, cache line is the basic unit of data transfer between cache and the system memory uh, smallest portion of the data that can be mapped into a cache is what we call as the cache line uh, every mapped cache line is associated with a core line which is corresponding region of the backend storage when we say backend storage we are mostly talking about the system memory the cache line is generally fixed in size typically ranging between 16 to 256 bytes so first let's understand what exactly is a cache line see cache line is uh, whatever transfer that happens between the cache memory there will be a cache controller here and the primary memory whatever communication happens between these two it always happens in terms of cache line so in this case what happens is uh, whenever cache controller writes to the primary memory reads from the primary memory it always happens in a unit of cache line now the cache line can be 16 bytes 32 bytes 64 bytes 128 bytes or 256 bytes generally the standard is 64 bytes that means what the whole memory is implemented as uh, cache lines uh, the uh, in as core lines each core line is the size of a cache line okay so that is that is transferred into the cache memory okay if this is 64 bytes it will also be 64 bytes so each memory is like 64 bytes please take a look at this diagram
So if you see, uh, when we say system memory, I'm talking about this primary memory. Okay. Secondary memory refers to my hard disk, SSD, all those things becomes the secondary memory. Uh, this is the cache memory. Uh, please take. So this cache storage is nothing but this cache memory. Okay, you can we can understand the whole DDR memory or system memory can be understood as core lines. Generally, core line is also a size of cache line. Now, cache line can be anywhere from 16 to 128 bytes in size, that's oh, sorry, 256 bytes in size. Now, mostly it will be 16 or 32 or 64, two to the power numbers or 256. But for a system, it is fixed. For any, for a given system, hash line size is fixed. We cannot change it. Once it is, let's say 64, it's fixed. Uh, mostly the standard is 64 bytes. Standard is 64 bytes. Uh, the, the, the cache memory L1 and L2 caches are also implemented as Uh, basically implemented understood as i mean they are they're they are like everything is understood like a cache lines the whole memory is distributed as cache line you see the whole memory is treated as cache line one cache line two cache line three so on uh, the primary memory is treated as core lines now before we just get into the concept of cache let's understand the role of a primary memory see when we boot up a system when we let's say when we boot up a system or laptop for that matter, all the applications are loaded from secondary memory that is nothing but SSD to the primary memory because it is quick to access. When we say primary memory, we are talking about DDR. It is also can be called as system memory. We can even call it as primary memory or the system memory. Uh, the, the systems want even better performance. The SOC wants even better performance. So that is where uh, cache is introduced between processor and DDR. Okay, uh, cache is introduced between uh, the processor and the DDR. Now, more frequently accessed locations are stored into the cache so that when processor wants to access those locations, it can get it from instead of so it improves the performance now the, then you may say fine why can't everything be cache only why can't we just remove the primary memory why can't we keep everything as a cache memory only can someone tell me why are we not doing because of the cost it's the cost basically this is implemented using DRAM technology this is implemented using SDRAM technology, uh, S SRAM technology, sir, not SDRAM, SRAM. Okay, it requires uh, six transistors. This requires only one transistor. So automatically it is bigger in size and it is also more power consumes. I mean, it will consume more power because there are a lot more transistors are involved. Uh, so effectively, uh, primary memory will be relatively bigger, cache memory will be smaller. Okay, because of that, it cannot 
hold the cache memory cannot hold the entire primary memory because it's limited in size this is bigger in size okay same thing applicable between primary memory and system memory see my ddr will be let's say 8 gigabyte this will be 1 terabyte can it hold 1 terabyte no we only load the applications that are being currently accessed for example in my laptop currently i'm accessing powerpoint i'm accessing xls i'm accessing paint i'm accessing go to meet gvim they are all loaded into my ddr right now and those instructions are being accessed by the cpu and it is executing it is executing powerpoint presentation it is executing XLS, Paint, everything by accessing the application data from the DDR memory. But see what happens, even in that, I am accessing this presentation, CHI protocol, more frequently. Since two days, I have been accessing the same content. So my CPU understands that Chai is the one which is being more frequently accessed. So whenever I type Chai, automatically it comes up with the that information. So this is where uh, the primary memory and cache memory holds the more frequently used applications the more frequently accessed cache lines okay so in in the primary memory it works at the application level which applications are being currently accessed cache memory holds which locations are frequently accessed those locations it will maintain the cache now when we say location it doesn't there is a granularity for the cache so the cache works at a cache stores the elements cache line granularity so the access between cache and system memory happens at this granularity i hope you understood one student has asked a question. Let's address that first. Uh, is the cache line uh, is basically a data line or if the cache line is 64 bytes, then it means it, it can hold 64 bytes of data. See, cache line is a virtual notional division of the memory. Cache line is not a data line, not a data line. It is a notional division of the memory. For example, my memory is there. My cache is there. I can, I will understand this part of memory as one cache line. This part of one memory is one cache line like that. That is the cache line. So it's not the data line. That is what we are calling as a cache. Line. Uh, Prasanna, is it clear? Any other questions? Okay. So in summary, let's summarize what happens and where exactly cache and cache line comes into picture. Uh, my laptop is booted up. You are okay to go at this level or you, if you are already comfortable with these concepts, then I can move on to the next aspects. Uh, can someone tell, I mean, are you all familiar with cache coherency concepts? Because I don't want to teach what you already know. No, sir. We want to know what is cache coherency and all these concepts. Okay, fine. So let's say laptop is booted up. So what happens? The first thing that happened is all the applications and data is present in secondary memory. This SSD. Okay. And what happens? Uh, there is a ROM, right? From where uh, ROM has the low, uh, immediate, I think, Q thinks the boot related code will be there. Here, what happens? Uh, the processor, there is a primary processor. Every system will have a primary processor, primary core our processor uh, starts booting from on and then it moves to it get, gets instructions from other memory instructions from other memories also as per these instructions uh, as per these instructions 
the application data gets moved that is by means of BMA from secondary memory to primary memory. Primary memory here refers to DDR. So whatever that is present in SSD, HDD gets moved to DDR. Generally, DDR will be, you know, right, will be anywhere from 4 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes in size. Depending upon whether it's a personal laptop, whether it's a server, it could be even bigger actually. I mean, much bigger also. Okay. So based on this, this will decide how many applications can you load. See, if I try to load 30 applications, my laptop will crash because my the system memory in my laptop doesn't support the 30 locations loaded at same time. So to load some new application, I have to close some of these things. Only then my system will perform better. Okay, so the processor can only access DDR directly. Uh, processor can't access system memory directly. Uh, not system memory, secondary memory directly. It's always routed through the DDR. Okay, uh, that is where DDR holds a lot of importance in the entire flow. Okay, so what happened now? As once you booted up the system, all the important applications, for example, uh, my, in my case, the PPT, the X spreadsheet, uh, the GoToMeet application, the Vim, the Chrome, all these, all these application data, uh, instructions and the data. Because the, every application will have two things, the instructions and the data it is accessing, right, is moved to DDR. Why, why we are moving to DDR? Because DDR provides low latency. See, accessing SSD and HDD will, will be time consuming. Generally, it will take more time. Accessing the content from DDR will be relatively quicker compared to SSD and HDD. That means what? Let's say if a processor fetching uh, uh, something from L1 cache, let's say takes 2 nanoseconds, for example. Same thing fetching from L2 nano, L2 may take 4 nanoseconds. Let's say from accessing DDR, let's say it may take 15 nanoseconds. SSD, it may take 30 nanoseconds. HDD may take 100 nanoseconds. I'm just giving a rough correlation. So that is where uh, the advantage is if some entry is present in L1 cache, it latency will be very less because it's immediately next to the processor. Whereas L2 cache, it will be more, DDR will be little higher. So when you go to HDD, it will be even very high. That is where whatever applications you are, you are accessing are loaded into DDR. Why we don't load into L1 and L2 caches? Because they are too small in size. L1 and L2 caches will be generally very small in size. Because of that, we don't load the applications into L1 and L2, we load into DDR. Okay. You may say, what is the need for loading? Because DDR is a volatile memory. See, DDR is volatile. Because it is volatile, we, it, when, you, when we power off, when the power is off, it won't hold applications. Can someone tell me what is SSD? Is it volatile or non-volatile? Non-volatile. Non SSD is non-volatile. Because of that, even when power is off, even when power is off, holds the applications. Same thing for uh, HDD also. Hard disk drive. Okay. So that is where uh, to reduce the latency of access that uh, every applications which are currently being accessed are moved into the DDR from SSD to DDR or from HDD to DDR. Uh, that is done by a means of uh, direct memory access. There will be a system level direct memory access. Uh, through that, that application data will be moved. Even in those applications, there will be few things which I will be accessing very frequently. See, in that applications also, see application is what is application? Can someone tell me when we say application, what exactly is an application for a VLS engineer? What data. 
application is nothing but a set of instructions now it could be arm instructions it could be uh, MIPI instructions or any other processor specific in risk 5 instructions and depending upon which processor we are working with those set of instructions is what we call as the application right let's say my, my powerpoint is nothing but instructions uh, which is a huge set of instructions so when i open when we open an application when we open powerpoint presentation let's say ppt application what happens is those instructions it will continue let the ppt instruction size is uh, around uh, 500 megabyte the whole entry gets loaded the whole instructions set gets loaded into gets moved to edr and the processor starts accessing these instructions from DDR. Now, even in that, there will be a specific address location where they, it would have been moved. Let's say 500 MB means they would have moved from 32 tick H 1000 to 32 tick H uh, 1230 or 1030. Let's say that means what this PowerPoint this much data is present between this location now i have taken a hypothetical case see three five zeros probably won't mean 500 megabytes see megabyte means 20 you need at least till here uh, six into four twenty four yeah that probably corresponds to 500 mb megabyte assume okay so whenever i'm doing anything related to the power point let's say i go here and do some change uh, that change will be that corresponding instructions will be present in these address locations of the DDR. Now, what happens is there are uh, in this address range, in this address range, there are few locations which I access even more frequently, which the which I access more regularly. More regularly, these locations are stored as part of cache so that latency can be much smaller see latency when you access from l1 and l2 cache it is much smaller than ddr so that is where the those frequently accessed locations will be kept into cache now assume that those locations are example 32 tick h 100 0 32 tick h 100 0 for example these two locations so when we say cache, we have cache line, we are not only talking about one location. If cache line size is 64 bytes, uh, the one uh, entry will be entry stored will be from 32 tick H 101 uh, 32 tick H 1001 uh, how much 3 F. Can you tell me how I came up with number 3F? Because if you convert 64, it comes to tick H40. So if it starts from 0, it has to go till 3F. So one cache line will correspond to this entire data in this range. Okay. Similarly, the other cache line. Uh, will be stored from 802. What is the next one? Can you tell me? BF. So, when, uh, so here the assumption is what? These are the frequently, these are the two frequently accessed locations uh, as part of the uh, PowerPoint presentation application. See, my processor is frequently accessing these two locations. So it won't be just 100. The, it refers to the entire cache line range. It refers to the entire cache line range. So this is the basic unit of transfer between the cache and the DDR memory. So when, when, the, when we say processor is fetching, 
let's say for example here processor decided that uh, 32 bit h 1000 this one should be part of cache but let's say but that entry is not present in cache what it will do the cache controller will so my processor will give an instruction saying that processor will give a type of instruction uh, where my interconnect cache controller cache in controller understands that uh, this entry should be uh, this entry should be created in uh, this entry should be uh, created in uh, allocated in cache so because it understood that it should this entry should be created in the cache cache controller will make read to the DDR memory which the data at that it would catch this location so the point is it doesn't just get one location it doesn't just get one location it gets entire time data. That means what? The 64 bytes of data. That is the basic concept of cache line. So anytime you are accessing any location in between this range, you have to get the entire cache line data. So that means cache line is the basic unit of data transfer between cache memory and primary memory. But that is that that is not true for this one. If you take this one, it is not true. Oh, sorry, where is it? Here between these two, it is not true. Here only the concept of cache line is present. This can access in a different sizes. This can access in a different size. But when it comes to the cache memory and the primary memory, DDR memory, the basic unit of communication is the cache line. I hope uh, everyone understood. Now, then you may say, what is the challenge in this? It's very simple, right? Then why do you need complex protocols like Chai protocol and all that? See what happens. The overall cache hierarchy is com more complicated than what you see here. Uh, every core has its own associated L1 cache. A cluster of uh, cores has a L2 cache associated with, the, with them. Uh, then you can have multiple such clusters as you would see in the next slide okay so you can see each this core has l1 cache this core has l1 cache uh, this has l2 cache this has l2 cache and these cluster level maintenance co coherency maintenance we have to do that is system level coherency maintenance we have to do so because of that the concept of uh, coherency gets complex now you may say what exactly is the coherency here is if this core is performing some write into this location location 100 my interconnect coherency interconnect should make sure that that gets reflected into other caches also if they are holding location 100 they should also be up to updated if you don't update them then it becomes non-coherent system because it has got a different view of the location it has got a different view of the location so that is where it is not coherent i hope you got the basic idea now coming back to this uh, I uh, let's quickly revise. So, what is an application? When you open application, what happens? You have discussed that. Then we discussed uh, uh, that for a frequently accessed locations, uh, uh, if the cache line size is 64 bytes, what happens? I have told you this part. And now, here, what happens is uh, there are because cache line size is limited is limited. Uh, it can hold only can only hold limited number of cache lines. Uh, whereas DDR has much bigger size, right? DDR will be much bigger in size, so it will hold a larger amount of uh, core lines. So there we need to maintain the cache lines. We need to maintain cache lines. That means what? Sometimes you remove some cache lines, add new cache lines, evict some cache lines uh remove or uh, add a new cache line and uh, maintain coherency between with other caches maintain 
cohorency with other caches so all of that need to be done so this is where we need a protocol which will take care of all these things that is where the chai protocol comes into picture even the same thing is what ace protocol also does but as i said ace is for a smaller systems where there are small number of masters less number of masters whereas chai is meant for much complex systems so any questions so far this conference will now be recorded okay so before the break we were discussing about the, what is a cache and uh, what is a cache line uh, and uh, we did discuss about uh, what is uh, how the uh, communication happens between the processor cache and the system memory and the secondary memory okay uh, there are some locations which a processor can directly access into the ddr it doesn't want it to be part of the cache okay for those locations there is no need to maintain the coherency because they are directly being accessed from the primary memory okay but this path doesn't exist I mean processor doesn't directly access the system mem uh, secondary memory anytime next mm, any other questions before we move on to the next topic next part of the coherency okay. so and of talking further about cache uh, there are two types of caches one is write back cache one is write through cache first let's understand write back cache so write back cache simply writes to the processor's local cache like local cache is like l1 cache or l2 cache and then lets the processor continue its normal operation see we we won't update let's say we are writing to location 100 location 100 is updated here it will not be updated here okay it is the interconnect which is responsible for making sure that it is updated here here and here okay. during the whenever we need to evict that location that means we need to remove that location from the cache and add a new location then only the data will be updated into the system shared memory. that type of caches are called as write back cache so if you read it now the write back cache simply writes to the processor's local cache then lets the processor continue its normal operation <clears throat> data in the cache is returned to its final destination later so data in the cache could differ from data in the storage for short period of time i told you right say i may have some data in cache which is different from the shared memory okay. then you may say how can other core get the right data uh, so other core whenever it makes a request it goes to the cache coherent interconnect it will first check with the other caches do you have this updated data based on that if it has the updated data it will give it so my access will not happen to system memory shared memory okay so that is how even the other processor will get the proper data only uh, further to it the principal purpose of write back cache is to effectively boost the computer performance because when you do write back means what what is the meaning of write back means at later point of time we'll write into the shared memory right right now all accesses will only happen here sometime later we'll update into the shared memory. because of that performance will increase so the other type of cache is write through cache what is write through cache is write through cache halts application processing until data in the cache is also updated in the main memory or disk i mean whatever update you do to the cache that should also be that should get updated to the main memory also that is the system memory or the ddr this ensures that cache and storage data are always consistent before an application is allowed to continue most of the times we are talking about the coherency for write through, write back cache not for the write through cache okay now what exactly is a cache coherent interconnect if you refer to this diagram this is the interconnect which takes care of the cache coherency it has got some additional signaling through which it maintains the coherency it ensures that if something is updated here it is reflected here here and here also now you may ask is this how the amba chai protocol coherency works the fundamental concepts remain same 
but it not it, it won't have anything like cache coherence interconnect there will be a different way in which uh, coherency is maintained so we'll talk about all those things as we go forward so here i'm just giving you a introduction to the concept of cache coherency uh, in the write through cache the performance will be impacted because every time you uh, update a cache that should also be updated to the main memory what is cache coherent interconnect? Coherent interconnect that enables the hardware coherency. In hardware coherent systems, an operating system can run over multiple processor clusters without complicated cache maintenance software. Means basically when you say hardware coherency is, uh, it is the hardware which is responsible for taking care of the coherency. So you don't need a software to take care of that. So hardware based IO coherency is used by transaction hosts using ACE interface protocol or similar protocol. Like when we say similar protocol, we are talking about CHI protocol in the ARM based processor subsystems. So the hardware based coherency is implemented either through ACE protocol or CHI protocol. The cache coherency interconnect can issue snoop request to the ACE interfaces. Similar concept snoop request will be there in the CHI protocol also which will take care of the, the, which are used to take care of the coherency. And uh, they use its snoop filter table to determine if a memory location is cached. If there is a cache hit, the data is returned to the source. When the transaction is not non-cacheable or the memory address of the transaction is not there in the cache, that is a miss. The cache coherence interconnect operates like a regular interconnect and forwards the transactions to the memory address location memory address destination that means what let's say it is it wants to read a location 100 what my cache coherence interconnect does is you see ace compliant interconnect that is cache coherence interconnect it will check with the other masters do you have that cache line it will check do you have that cache line if they say no i don't have it uh, other masters also say i don't have it then it knows that no one has the cache line so it will go and fetch the data from the main memory. Whereas if other caches have the entry, let's say it has got the entry. When it sends a request, it will say that, yes, I have the entry and it will provide the data. So the data, whatever comes here, it will be given here. So you don't have to now get from here. So this is how ACE protocol implements the coherency. The process of interconnect asking, do you have this entry? That is called as snooping. What is meant by snooping? The process of checking what is your status, what is happening with this cache line. That is called a snooping. Uh, I think I have already shown you this diagram. Uh, now let's understand the concept of cache line states maintained in the cache. So I think uh, this diagram is a bit confusing. I'll explain through uh, a different diagram. Okay. Imagine a system. Uh, are you all comfortable till this point? Any questions you have? No. Okay. So what is meant by what is meant by cache line state? If you look at ARM based systems. Uh, every cache line in, uh, in ACE protocol, let's take ACE for that matter, in case of ACE, every cache line can be in one of the five states, either invalid. Clean or dirty. Clean means can be unique clean, shared clean. Dirty again, unique dirty, shared dirty. So you see, to take the overall combination, there are five five combinations are there. The cache line can be invalid, or the cache line can be it's like this. Cache line cache line can be 
invalid or it can be clean it can be valid either invalid or valid if it is valid it can be clean it can be dirty if it is clean it can be unique or shared if it is dirty it can be unique or shared so totally you see there are five combinations are there invalid unique clean unique uh, shared clean unique dirty shared dirty so totally five states are there for any cache line it means to say if i have a cache memory let's take like this if there is a processor one as a l1 cache of let's say uh, how much size 8 kilobytes cache let's take hypothetical okay if cache line is if processor one processor one or core one has l1 cache of size 8 kilobytes each cache line is 64 bytes in size tell me can you tell me how many cache lines are, are there totally there in core one l1 core one means processor one l1 can someone tell me totally 128 cache lines will be there how did i get 8 kilobytes divided by 64 is 128 because my total memory size is 8 kilobytes whereas my uh, each cache line is 64 bytes so if i divide 8 kilobytes with 64 i get 128 just for convenience let's take a smaller number 4 so it will be 4 kilobytes divided it will come to 64 so totally 64 cache lines are there so that 64 cache line i can imagine like this it is the this, this is what constitutes the cache lines So each cache line has a state. Let's say this is cache line zero. Constitutes the 64 bytes. It has got a address. It has got one address. Let's say address could be 32 dk 100 You remember, right? One of the cache lines I said. Cache line one. I don't need to write 64 bytes. Understand that it is 64 bytes only. So this will be the starting location. End location will be. Let's see this. Let's. Uh, I mean, I'm not able to do hexadecimal calculation, but it will be like zero one three there. Let's say cache line one is some other location. Thirty two tick H. one two here only here also it will become one two now it can be any random locations for that matter like this one two at least 64 cache lines are there for each cache line there is an address and the corresponding data the data also will be there so 64 bytes of data will be there for every line it's like an associative array where you have the address location and the corresponding data so this is the address of the uh, cache data that is present in the memory and this is the data so like that for every cache line there will be this data each cache line has a state each cache line has a state in fact then i don't need this here itself i can write cl0 uh, cl1 send it cell 
CL60. And uh, there is a state. State means each cache line can be the location, uh, the end location. End location is for our purpose. Okay, the data, data present in cache, cache line. State is a very important concept here. Now, this state can be either invalid, it can be unique clean, it can be unique clean, it can be shared dirty, it can be unique dirty, it can be shared clean. Like that, each entry has one of the five possible states. One of the five possible states. So, whenever processor issues some transaction to one of these address locations, accordingly this states gets updated so my processor one cache controller holds this entire information I mean what is the cache name what is the state or when an access happens what should we do that it takes care so this state of a cache can be one of the five only in case of ace protocol if you go to chai protocol it can have seven possible states instead of five it will become seven seven states this plus two more states will be there which we will talk as we go forward have you all got a basic idea about how a cache looks like what exactly we mean by a cache line and what is mean by a state of a cache okay now let us understand little more about what is mean by invalid what is mean by unique clean what is mean by shared dirty so that you can understand this better so what is mean by invalid is that entry doesn't exist that entry that, that location the location is not present in the cache that means if we say that this is invalid this location is not valid anymore if processor wants to access this location this location it cannot access from the cache it has to get from the either other cache or from the system memory that is what invalid means Unique, when we say unique clean, so yeah, uh, invalid in the sense if there is a cache miss, also then it is going to be invalid only. Cache miss, when it is invalid, it will be cache miss, yes, yeah. So we can say like that if it is a cache miss, then it is invalid, like that, or. What not like that see the cache maintains a state for each cache line see i can i can invalidate a cache location what i can do is processor can create a generate a transaction processor can do a transaction where it wants to remove wants to evict an entry a cache line the cache when it is evicted, when the let's say till this point it was unique clean. Once it is evicted, once it is evicted, it will become invalid. Got it. Now, if yeah, got processor it. wants to read from this cache location, it is it results in cache miss. Understood? Next. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now let's talk about what is meant by unique clean. Unique clean means you see in a system there are multiple masters are there. Multiple masters are there. Each of them can maintain a cache lines, right? Different different cache lines. It is possible that the same cache line is present in other caches also uh, it is also possible that it is this address location this is only part of this processor cache only that means what if it is unique clean means no one else is holding this cache line. no one else is holding this cache line the address location 12000100 is only part of the processor l1 cache no other processor cache has this entry and that is unique then you may say what is meant by clean it is clean means it is up to date whatever data 
since it is unique clean, unique clean means this 64 bytes of data is up to date with the system, DDR memory content. Since both of them are same, whatever data I have here in my cache line, that's it, the line 11 means cache line 11. Whatever data I have here and whatever data that is present in DDR, both of them are exactly same. Whatever changes that I have done, those changes are reflected into the system memory. So in those cases, it is called as clean. What is meant by dirty? I have done some updates, but they are not updated here. Let's say I have updated it to 27, but here the data is only 14. So this is different from this one, right? In that case, this entry is called as dirty. Entire cache won't be dirty. Entire cache won't be dirty. One cache line will be dirty. One cache line will be dirty. If you, if you say this is unique dirty means, unique dirty indicates that this 64 bytes location or this 64 bytes uh, only only this look unique dirty means this address is only cached in this core one in core one l1 only no other processor has this address entry address in their caches and what is mean by dirty means Dirty indicates that this location, this uh, core 1 L1 entry data is not up to date, up to date with the BDR memory content. Means BDR memory has a different data and uh, my cache has a different data. That is what we mean by dirty. So unique means one thing, like I hope you got it. U, D, U means, uh, unique means only I have that entry location. Dirty means uh, this, co whatever entry I have, let's say this location, I call it as uh, 56346700, okay. For example, this would be what, 5634675F. I just have to add 3F because size is 64 bytes, right? The, Size is 64 bytes, so difference will be 3F. So, uh, this entry, unique dirty, uh, sorry, it, it indicates that this location is only present in L1, the processor 1 L1 cache. No other cache has this location. Okay. Uh, what is mean by dirty here is this entry data that is present in my core 1 L1 cache doesn't match with the DDR memory entry data at this address location that is called as dirty now let us talk about shared dirty let's say this is 32 dh uh, 46921348 something like this okay because it is shared multiple different processor caches have this entry this address location cached in them. That's what we mean by shared. Then what is mean by dirty? You know, dirty meaning you know, right? Dirty essentially means that it is responsible for the uh, my one of these one of the scores, one of these processors who has this entry as dirty, who has the uh, dirty entry that team marked they are uh, they are responsible for they are eventually responsible for updating ddr memory the correct data with the today data the correct data with the final updated data, final data you understood the whole point means dirty indicates that my entry is not up to date with the if let's say if i'm in dirty my data is not matching with this data eventually eventually it is my responsibility to update this with whatever data i have so that this and this will match then i will move to 
clean state clean state next Sh shared clean means same thing you take the same thing uh simply if i say shared clean means what uh this uh core l1 entry data matches with vdr memory content data that is what we mean by shared clean uh, shared clean now this could be some random location let's say 32 dph 4394 Something like this. <coughs> like I have 64 cache entries in this processor one for L1, uh, core one L1. I can have one more core, one more core. Like you see, if I minimize it, there could be one more such core. Okay, which holds other set of caches. I mean, see, I can take like this. This is core one L1. To go back to this diagram i can have one more entry here okay. i can have core 2 core 2 means what this is the core 2 this is the processor 1 this is a processor 2 it will have its own caches it will have its own cache lines which are not which are not same now it could be something else it could be something else this could be something else let's say 32 dph this could be again 32 something else something else what i did you see both these are matching See, this one and this one are matching, right? So, this is where the coherency comes into picture because this is also holding the same address location. This also holding the same address location. They should have the same view of the data. Whatever data I have here, thus it should also have the same view of the data. That is what we mean by cache coherency. Okay. Like this, different, different entries will have different, different data. Okay. Similarly, core 3, depending upon how many processors are there in a cluster, they all will have different, different entries. Okay. It is the responsibility of this interconnect to take, uh, to handle that. So, we'll discuss this further as we go forward. But I hope you got a basic idea of what is meant by cache state. It is, when we say cache state, it is not the entire cache state. It's one line this is one line cache line zero at this location what is the state of that is it valid or invalid invalid means what this location is invalid you it's as good as not present at all it's as good as not present when we say unique clean means what only this cache line has the data uh, no other cache line has this address location cached like that we have understood other states also uh, understanding chai protocol is all about I mean, what is what is what is involved in understanding chai protocol is uh, because to maintain cache coherency uh, okay and uh, whenever processor one does any transaction is the responsibility of chai interconnect to update other caches for this transaction so that they can also update their cache state One more thing is when we say this entry is in unique link, it will never be, it will, it, it's not like it will always be in unique link. It can change. It can go from unique clean to shared clean. It can go from unique clean to unique dirty. So all those changes will happen. That is what we mean by the uh, 
this state diagram so one of the state diagram looks like this okay uh, it is in shared state from shared state it can go to invalid state from shared state it can go to modified state so all those things now you may say what is shared what is owned what is modified this is the definition unique dirty means modified this is ud shared dirty means owned i can even take this So modified is what unique dirty UD. U. shared means what owned uh, owned uh, share owned sorry owned is uh, shared dirty sorry shared dirty uh, shared means what uh, shared clean sc exclusive means what unique clean this is invalid i anyway so understanding chai protocol is about understanding this state diagram uh, chai state diagram will be a little more complex because you see this has got only five states this has got only five state the chai protocol will have plus two seven states will be there because of that this will be a little more complex the state transition will be a little more complex than what you see here now what this diagram tells you is this diagram tells the one of the states of a cache line we are talking about one cache line state diagram I mean, this cache line you see here in our XLS, there is one cache line, this one. So we are talking about cache line one. Every cache line follows this state diagram. Every state cache line follows either MoAC or MoC state diagram. There are different types of uh, state diagrams so these state diagrams indicate how a cache line should change its state when a transaction happens now the transaction can be transaction can be write can be read can be evict can be clean clear clean can be snoop so that different different types of transactions when a specific transaction happens how the cache line state should change that is what is indicated by these state diagrams so that is something you can see here what does this tell is for example one of the locations okay is in invalid let's say what is that location let's say cache line zero is in invalid state right cache line zero is in invalid state now someone did a read miss shared read miss shared means what they have performed a read performed a read uh, they are accessing a shared location they they want the location to be shared whatever location they want to read uh, let's say i want to read one location once the read happens i'm okay with that that entry present in other memories also see what is that means my processor has performed a read okay to one one address location uh that entry doesn't present in my cache because it is a read miss okay and i i'm okay with that is that being present in the other cache lines also then uh i will go to shared clean that means what uh since i'm sharing with sharing the same entry with other caches also i'll be in share and uh, since I'm reading, whatever uh, up to date data will be there, I will get that. So because of that, it will be clean. So that will be shared clean. So what it tells is whenever you are in invalid and there is a read miss happens and you are receiving a shared kind of access, then the next state will be shared clean. For example, you have done a write. Your, your entry is in right, uh, shared clean. Let's say one of the entry, you are in shared clean state. 
now uh, someone did a write i mean the processor has done a write to that location what happens you are your data is modified but it is not matching with the main memory data see i have done a write i have done a write to this entry but that entry whatever i write it won't match with this one right because i have only updated my local cache line so since it won't match with this this will be called as dirty since i am updating this one and this will get invalidated whatever entries that are present in other things will get invalidated so it will go to unique state so it will be unique dirty state so this is what this state diagram talks about So in summary, what happens is each of the overall cache is divided into multiple cache lines. Each cache line can have one of the seven possible states. In case of Chai, five states in case of Ace protocol. So case protocol five possible states are there in case of uh, uh, chai it will be seven possible states so when master one or other master does some transaction now it can be a write transaction it can be a read transaction any type of transaction okay or clean transaction or a evict transaction uh, there is a cache coherence in cache coherency interconnect will be there coherent interconnect will be there which takes care of the cache line changes state changes now when once once the change happens this shared clean uh, our unique uh, shared clean right shared clean will move to unique dirty address will still be same address will be still be same why it will move to unique dirty because the master the core one core one has performed a right hit it has done a right to the existing location in the cache so my master has done a right hit i was in shared clean so my state will change from shared clean to unique dirty because my data got modified right my data got modified with respect to the main memory whatever data i have here whatever data that is present here they don't match because of that i will become dirty and because i am updating other locations will get invalidated because I, I i want coherency right what do i mean by coherency my entry should be matching with other entries if not i want to evict them i want to remove them so if i remove them i'm i'm only left with the data unique and i'm dirty so my state will be unique dirty state did you all understood So, uh, yeah. sir, please ask. Yeah, me. could you explain me this about uh, unique data once again? I want to say how it is going to be modified like that. No, what time? Uh, see this, what happens yeah. if a system consists of many processes or it's a course. Each core has its own associated L1 cache and group of cores as uh, L2 cache. L2 cache. Uh, multiple clusters have. Anyway, I, let me not introduce the concept of L3 cache. Right now, this is fine. What happens is each of these caches, each of the above caches. As cache lines, let's say 64 bytes in size. That's each. When each each of these cache lines, see when we just uh, restart the system, we I mean power up the system. The entire cache lines. There is no. There are no entries in the cache line, right? There are no 
entries in the cache line. Cache. So all lines are invalid initially because when I power up, there is nothing in the cache. So there is nothing in the cache because of that, all the lines will be invalid. Now, when processor one issues a cacheable read to a location, let's say location 100, then what happens? What will be the state? Let's understand what will be the next state. Let's understand. That is what this state diagram tells. See, you are in which state? Tell me initially. Address location 100 is in which state right now? Initially. Invalid. Sorry, it is in invalid state. Now, where do you think it will go to? Where do you think uh, uh, which state will it go to? Can you tell me? Did I do uh, pro bright hit? No. Uh, I will explain what is pro bright hit. Basically, this is what has happened. I have performed a read and I, it's missed. My cache doesn't have it. Initially, it's invalid. So I'm, I'm reading location 100. I'm reading location 100, but the entry, that entry doesn't exist. I'm reading my processor one. What's the processor just call this four one. Four one is reading at 100. That location doesn't exist in the cache. So it will result in, read will result in miss, right? Read will result in miss, cache miss. That means what? Read miss. Because of that, See, when you are in invalid state and a read miss happens, this arrow indicates that you will go to shared state. So now, uh, entry at 100 gets created in, in cache. Which cache? So 4, 1, L1 cache. And the state of that will be shared clean. It will be in the shared clean state. Now, after some time, after some time, I core one has done a write to address location 100 with some different data. You see, this write I did, this write has only happened to, has only happened to core one. L1 cache. So it is not, it won't match with, it will not, uh, surely it won't match with BDR data. Because BDR is not up to date, right? So it is, this location will be dirty. This location is dirty. And the other thing is, since I am updating my memory, uh, what my interconnect will do is because you, this is updated, it will invalidate these two. Other other memories it will invalidate. So I will be in only unique state. My location will be unique. The core L1, core 1, L1 will only have this entry. So what is the summary? Unique, dirty. So what is unique, dirty? Modified state. So my next state will be if I mean shared clean and uh, I my master performed a right hit I will go to unique dirty state if now you may say is this the only possible transition no there is one more transition possible some other master performed a right to their location let's say I have a address 100 some other master performed a right to 100 here so this got updated right so because of that, it will become dirty. Since it is getting updated, my location will be evicted. So I will I will go back to invalid state. That is called as if some other master accesses it, that is called as probe write hit. When we say probe write hit means some other master writing to the same location 
in that case whatever entry i have should get invalidated right because my entry is my entry is not up to date now because at some other point some other master has performed a write to the same location so my location will get invalidated so i will move from shared clean to the invalid state Uh, someone had a doubt is it clear now yes sir sir so this state diagram explains how this state transition happens for the cache lines understand this is not the this is not entire cache state diagram this is the diagram state diagram of each and every cache line see if i have uh, 64 entries you see here how many entries i have 64 entries I have. So each entry will have its own unique state, either invalid, unique clean, unique clean, shared dirty, based on the transactions that happen, uh, that are done by the other masters or the same master, the state transitions will happen. So in this case, let us understand one keyword called as what is meant by probe write hit, what is meant by probe read hit. And what is meant by read miss? What is meant by uh, write hit? So all those keywords, if we understand, understanding the state diagram will be very easy. So what is meant by probe write hit? Let's see. Some other master is doing a write to a cash line, cash location, to a location, to location 100, let's say. I'm just taking 100 for convenience. So the interconnect, the cache coherent interconnect, CCI, will do probe right hit to other masters. Some other master means, let's say, M2 in this case, to other masters like M1 and M3. It will check. It'll, so CCI, cache coherent interconnect, is telling, you see, M2 is writing to its local cache. So I am indicating the same thing to you. I am indicating same thing to you. You take appropriate action. Take appropriate action. It. What is mean by appropriate action is since master 2 has done an update, master 2 has done update to its cache. So I got the same notification. So I am telling you that it that update has happened. So this it will tell that probe right hit, probe right hit. So this master will decide what to do. In this case, it will decide that it should go to invalid state because if the probe right hit happened, I will move to pro, uh, invalid state. So this is how we understand the state diagram. We'll talk more about the state diagram and uh, how the state transition happens, uh, all that through detailed example. In the next session, we'll take some examples and see what will be the initial state, what, when some read happens, when write happens, what, how the state changes happens, all those things we'll discuss in the next session. So this is a brief about uh, cash and cash coherency. Uh, in the next session, we will continue with the other aspects of the Chai protocol uh, and also we will talk a little more deep into cache coherency. So we will stop the session here. Any questions before we end? Sir, can you show us the I mean, say other two states, right, in CHI? Can you show what are the other two states? Other two states are? Yeah. I will show you. Unique dirty partial, unique clean empty. This is the other state. See, either cash line can be valid or invalid. In the valid, it can be unique, it can be shared. In the unique, it can be dirty or clean. Even in that, it can be unique dirty, shared dirty, and it can be unique dirty partial, unique clean empty. So there are this, these are the seven possible states of the cash lines. Okay, partial data in the sense, uh, uh, partial data is going to be valid like uh, strobes, that's it. 
and yes it it is similar to that it has got different meaning also not just partial data uh, uh, part of the cache uh, so yes, yes. okay yeah. yeah md means all the i mean to say all the data is going yeah, to be I, no no entry is there but i i am still the owner of that cache time i still okay. have the ownership but no no data is valid okay yeah so we'll be uh, understanding more of this uh, cache time states and everything because understanding this concepts is very important to learn the chai protocol because it, the chai protocol is all about the state transitions uh, understanding when a transaction happens how this state transition happens and all those things uh, that will plan for next session any other question before we end the session no thank you okay so let's stop